I'm going to be showing you how to make a feather um, into a quill pen. This is a feather I bought at Michael's. It was actually in a three pack, I believe. So I'm going to take that out. And this is a feather that I've already made into a pen. And I have over here an example of a pen and the pen shape that we're looking for. So this is a metal, has a metal nib, and it has like a little split in it. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a split down, down this nib. It also has an arc that is scooped out and an angle, and it siphons the ink up that little slit and holds the ink so that it can write. I'll show you what that looks like. So it works. This is a little bit old, but that's how that works. So um, we're gonna first. I like to clear off some of the excess feathers just to make it a little smoother. And by the way. Ideally, this feather should be cured in hot sand before you even begin carving it. Um, how would you do that? Well, I've seen people heat up hot sand in a, a hot plate, and then you can put the feather in for a short period of time, and it cures, it hardens the feather tip. So, um, I don't have that with me, and I've never actually cured them in hot sand, and I just recarved them, and they're not totally perfect. So, if you want this to last a very long time, that's what you would do. All right, so, so the first thing I want to do is make a cut that's at the same diagonal as this kind of pen, and I want to feel how how it would naturally sit in my hand. Now, um, I have some other feathers here, and they're, this one's made correctly, where it's angled this way, and I'm writing with it kind of angled, arched over my hand. But then I saw this one, <laughs> and this one was made, I mean, I don't know, I mean, if it's totally incorrect, but it feels a little odd to have the, when you're holding it, to have the pen flipping up over your hand. So I recommend that you hold the feather and feel how it feels natural on your hand and feels comfortable. And then you're going to create a diagonal across uh, the tip. So I'm going to create the diagonal this way. And I'm going to use an X-Acto knife. And this is an old X-Acto knife. It even has rust on the blade, and that's not good. This was from my classroom. And so I'm going to have to unscrew this, take this out, and find a new blade. This is luckily a new blade, which I can then insert here and tighten an X-Acto knife all the way. So you want to hold one finger here, one, uh, two fingers here on the top, and then your other hand on the bottom and screw it tight. And then um, you're going to make your diagonal. Now, make sure I'm not crooked. My diagonal needs to go this direction. So I'm going to cut as hard as I can. You might wonder how far up to go. Uh, the feather kind of changes direction a little bit. It kind of tapers in. I like to go right above where it starts tapering. This will give me enough room in case I make a mistake to keep going further up the, the um, feather. And also, I might want to continue carving this. There it goes. Just disappeared somewhere. I might want to continue carving this up uh, as I keep using it to, to make it work better. So, next thing I'm going to do is take out, uh, you can use a piece of wire, but I have this clay tool, these clay tools, or an awl, um, to get the interior stuff out so that it can actually siphon up the ink. So you got to clear this out. Some people, if you just have a wire, it might be easier just to jam it all the way up in the feather. Shaft, the shaft, it's fine if you want to do that. Or you can try to like pick it out. I'm probably just going to pick some of it out here with this tool. Which is not totally coming out very well. Uh, I'm going to try this one. Let's see, coming out a little bit better. 
Okay, I'm just gonna jam it, the rest of it back in there. All right. So blowing it, make sure it's, there's a little piece that's left over in here and I wanna get that out because I don't want anything blocking the ink from flowing in there. I'm just gonna jam that piece down at the bottom. Okay, so now that I have this diagonal, what I like to do next is scoop it. Now you'll notice that this has a scoop. This one has a scoop. Um, I like to hold it with one hand very firmly and push with my thumb against the back of the X-Acto knife. And I'm trying to create like a scoop. So I'm creating a scoop. There we go, that's pretty scooped. Maybe I'll do it even a little further back. All right, and then the next thing I do, now that I have, I have the opening, I have the diagonal cut, I have the scoop, is, this is probably the hardest part, is trying to get that line down the center of the feather um, and inside. So trying to create this opening that this, this pen had here. So I need to create an opening. I want to lay my X-Acto knife down, and you want your opening to go from the base of where we make this cut here to all the way to the tip, but on the interior here. So, and ideally directly in the middle, which is tricky. So I'm just going to push really hard, and luckily I kind of scored it, so you can kind of keep scoring it. And until it splits. Okay, it split there. And now I want to carve the sides into the split a little bit to make it even. Because the sides are, the split is like not totally in the center. And that's just going to happen. So I need to carve whatever side is asymmetrical. I'm going to carve it in a little bit more. Okay, and you can, some people choose to cut their tips off a little bit flat afterwards. You can just take a little bit off the top so it's flat. Just to whittle this way on the side a little more. And that's pretty good. Um, yeah, and I'm gonna try it out. And it's not holding a ton of ink, but it's holding some ink. Um, I could probably make it hold a little bit more by increasing that um, angle of the scoop. But yeah, it works. That's how you make a quill pen.